I'm bummed that it is even an issue. <laughs> you know, like I, you know, I'm 42 years old and I think that we have been talking about gender inequality forever. Hi, my name is Grace. I am non-binary. My name is Madison Young and senior at Danville High School. Hi, my name is Bradley Smith. I'm 18 years old and go to Danville High School. I'm David Schilling. I'm the principal here at Danville School. Mark Ducharme. I'm a teacher here at People's Academy. My name is Moira Donovan and I'm a high school English teacher. My name is Amy Richard and I am a social studies teacher. When I came to Danville, I, it, was, it was clear really immediately that this was a strong community. Um, everybody knows each other, it's a small town, but at the same time it's not tiny. Um, we're kind of either a big small school or a small big school. And that comes, there, there are two sides to that. One is that small close-knit community builds character and builds a strong school. The other is that sometimes our uh, traditions, our customs become ingrained in our culture and sometimes we don't quite see the outside perspective on how we are. It's tough because I think it would, I wouldn't be as aware of inequality. Um, sometimes I think that we have to be aware of wh what is unequal to make it equal. Um, so I guess, you know, it's different because I don't feel personally affected by issues of inequality. So in some ways, not having it, I think, has made me be more aware of what I have to do to, to change it. There was a lot of stereotypes. I grew up, it was almost like an in-between generation. You know, we weren't in this generation that was very closed-minded, but they also weren't very open-minded. I grew up in Newport, Orleans area. Um, it was very small and there wasn't a lot of, um, like it's diversity, it wasn't very diverse. And um, it seemed like people had one opinion about um, gender and people, um, were sexist and I was kind of always raised in an environment where men were better um, and men were more in control even and the women just did all of the work. My mom and dad were really traditional. They were much older when they had me so I had older parents but like my dad worked and my mom stayed home. Um, but her job, uh, it wasn't like she stayed home and ate bonbons, like she gardened and um, made it so basically we're self-sufficient at my home. Um, I had a really strong mom and like she was really like handy in ways that I could never be. Um, but I think that they made me strong because I got enough of their stubbornness and enough of their intelligence that um, even though I didn't agree with them always on political issues, I still had, um, I, I, I came out on the other end stronger because of it. Do you consider yourself a feminist? Uh, I consider myself a humanist. Uh, so possibly, you know, implicit in that is that, you know, you want to advocate for rights for everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you're not looking for a, a set definition. I, I would look at it as, I guess, well, for me, it's to identify my own gender. I'm, I'm not sure it's anything I really thought about. I think, I think from the get-go, as soon as I was self-aware, I s saw myself as a boy and male and never really thought about it. And, but today it seems to be more of an understanding of how I see myself up here, um, how I am biologically formatted, and then how I act outside. So it's sort of a combination of three. Uh, that has not changed for me since um, I even thought about those things, but I know that um, in working with students and working with friends and other adults or having a social life, it seems to be a combination of those three. How did gender inequality affect your childhood? It felt weird to me, you know, being stuck in this kind of like 
box that society made for me. You know, as soon as I was born, you know, I was called a girl. You know, that's who I was. And I wore girl clothes and I had female pronouns. And it, it was very like, you know, almost suffocating because everybody was telling me that this was who I was and that I couldn't change that. Growing up, it was almost like they chose my identity for me. So I did grow up with a lot of strong um, influences and strong women. Um, but in terms of men, I didn't really have a good role model or influence. Um, my dad is a good guy um, and he was present, but he, he just didn't seem like he cared as much. It started to change when I entered high school. A lot of my male teachers um, had the characteristics, same characteristics my mom, my stepmom had, which were very motivated and um, thoughtful of others and witty um, and intelligent. And that definitely um, made me realize the prejudices that I had that I developed throughout my childhood. Um, and I'm glad that I entered high school and was able to meet men who um, were good role models. I always felt that um, it was really limiting and that um, as a gay person people can be way more fluid than just defining themselves one way or the other. What does gender inequality look like in schools? Well my profession certainly has. Yeah. Uh, it's given me an opportunity to see it firsthand, mm -hmm. to see what I think, and I'm, I'm just being, making some assumptions, I might be wrong, but at times smart girls dumbing themselves down a little bit because it's intimidating for, for boys. To ha at least I've seen that at times. Um, or to have a package of history that there's nothing in there for people. So I try to do that now uh, based on ethnicity as well as gender. I gotta make sure there's something in there for everyone. That's why teaching has been a really great career for me, um, and um, especially being with teenagers. Um, I, I feel most teenagers allow for um, a lot of possibilities. Um, they, they envision a big world ahead of them, um, and within that, lots of different places to explore. And uh, that's been a really good place for me to be and always a good reminder of, um, of thinking about all these really big issues with so many different avenues. Oh, well, I think that um, times have changed a lot. Like I think you're really lucky to be coming of age in this time period because um, you guys are going to make a change and, it's, and th the world's ready for it and when we tried to make changes, we tried. Um, but in the 90s and the early thousands, I think that the, you know, I can remember being at a Red Sox game and someone was complaining about a baseball player from the other team saying how bad they were. And I turned around and gave like a statistic of how they weren't really bad and they were a classy player and the guy um, asked me what, you know, what man told me those statistics. Like that was his response to me. How can we change the discussion about gender inequality? My job as an educator is to really, is to raise strong citizens. And to me, gender equality absolutely matters in how we are as citizens of this world and of this country. And so it starts here, it starts at school, and we have to keep an eye on it. As a school administrator, as a teacher, um, you notice it pretty much, it, it's at a dull roar or a low buzz in a lot of places. Um, we see who is featured in our textbooks, who is featured in our history stories, and it does not seem to be an equal representation. Um, it seems that women many times are recognized for being women. It's Women's History Month, or it's notable women in science instead of just notable scientists. And so I think that's, that's really clear to this day in our schools. Just educating the students on what it is. I mean, if you see an individual that's picking on somebody do because they're a woman or a male or transgender or whatever, 
I mean just educating them. There are many people in this world that are extremely ignorant to those topics and we need to inform them, educate them on life. Um, I want to see more women as CEOs. I want my daughter to be a CEO of a company or to be to never have to deal with telling a man that they need to not speak for her or I know she's not there yet probably maybe her kids will be which is really sad but like I think that she is much more um, likely to become what she wants to be without being downtrodden than I was. I wish we could see what the world was like if we there was equality and what people would be like if they did have all of the inf um, information they needed or they were just aware. Parents and teachers can take the time to listen and to understand, then we would solve so many issues, you know, because ignorance can't be fixed with ignorance. It can only be fixed with education and acceptance.